That would be the Chet. It's, the, it's an H in, in Hebrew. So you have the beginning, the middle, and the end of the Hebrew alphabet indicated on that butterfly, it, it, suggesting to the Hebrews, well, let's get a language down. Yes. Yes, that is correct. Thank you for coming on the program again to make this verification. Now, Dr. Carpenter. Thank you, Dr. Zimmerman. I, I think you have something here to show the audience that Professor John Pendleton is holding. And let's take a moment to see that, and then let's look at your iridescent collection. This particular butterfly has a perfect smiley face on the underwing, right on the top of each underwing. A perfect smiley face. You know, the smiley face didn't occur in our society until just a few years ago. And there are some other pictures maybe we can blend in here to show different kinds of smiley faces. Well, and you know, the book of Proverbs says, uh, Mary heart doeth good like a medicine. Yes. So God indicated to us, be well. He wants us in good health. Yeah, smile yeah. about it. And, and smile about it no matter what comes our way. With the moments that remain, would you take us through the statement made by some of these beautiful butterflies that you've collected over the years? The, the statement of, of their beauty, is that what you're referring yes. to? The beauty of butterflies is beyond words. It's like trying to give praise to our Savior. When you start praising God, you run out of words. You bankrupt the English language quickly. And to talk about the beauty of these things bankrupts the English language. They come from all over the world. This beautiful green specimen is a male uh, specimen from New Guinea. Now that green, that emerald green, by the way, we'll pause for a moment. And I've been in New Guinea doing scientific research. Uh, let's apply this science to the majesty of God. Uh, we have four times in the Bible the mention of the rainbow. Yes. Once after the flood, twice uh, in uh, the book of Ezekiel, once in Revelation chapter 4. Yes. But it's not until Revelation chapter 4 that we have the color indicated. And the color is an emerald green. Interesting. And here we have the reflection of the glory and sovereignty of God. And this is indeed refle reflection again. This is not pigment. These are prismatic scales. So this is a reflection of that Superior beautiful interior design. Green. Yes. Uh, we see the same thing. The red on the bottom of these butterflies is also prismatic. And I don't know if we could uh, change the angle on that. Let's see if we can. Watch that red color and see as the angle changes if the color changes oh, from red yeah. to purple. Marvelous. Because of a prismatic effect. Yes. Well, evolution, again, does a marvelous job, doesn't it? <laughs> and uh, we need to, we need to escape out of from... the primordial muck. Oh, huh? <laughs> what a God we have. And it didn't use evolution to present these truths. We have just moments in the back display. You have gorgeous moths and butterflies from around the world. And you have beetles. Tell us briefly about the beetles, just in a nutshell. Beetles are so interesting. There are over, estimated over a million species of beetles in the world. By species, we mean a separate entity that will not cross or interbreed with the other species. More than all other insects combined. Actually, if you left the insects out, there would be more species of beetles than there are of all of their living species, plant and animals combined in the entire world. Incredible, incredible. As we close the moment, let's go back to the alphabet. We have, we've seen by the splendid work of Zell uh, Sanville, who uh, was not creationistic or Christian in orientation whatsoever. He found these, and by the way, he spelled out the name of the Queen of England first and gave those butterflies to her as a gift. And uh, the world since has been the beneficiary of these blessings. And then we see the marvelous design in the prismatic iridescence. And then we have found not only the English alphabet, but suggestions of the original alphabet, the Hebrew, which means that there is incredible extant evidence that God wants his creation to respond to him. All the beasts of the field respond innately. They're programmed to do so. But God made a creature in his likeness, in his image, with a tripartite being, body, soul, and spirit, with a choice. And that creature is man, made originally in the image of God, who lost his lofty estate, 
But in his condemnation, the God of the universe exercised compassion. Every whisper of the breeze in zephyr tones, every flutter of the butterfly, every passing of a gentle bird suggested that you're the product of God's creation. Yes, that's right. Would you let these beautiful butterflies at this moment whisper to you, God cares. God sent his son to die for you. You're the reflective image of God, so you're separate. You're not a product of the field or of evolutionary development. Now, would you let this gentle program say to you, God cares. Jesus came to earth. He died for your sins on a cross. He was buried. He rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and he lives at this moment, whispering to you, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart. Would you pray this simple prayer? Just pray it with me from your heart. Dear God, I need you. I'm a sinner. Thank you for solving my problem in Jesus Christ, your Son. Lord Jesus, right now, I open my heart to you. Right now, come in. Save me. Cover me with your blood, and I will serve you with all my heart. You see, my friend, it takes the remedy of the blood to erase the scars of sin. If you prayed that simple prayer, the God of the universe in the person of his son stepped into your heart to live forever. You can appreciate the flutter of the butterfly and the whisper of God, the cooing of a child, because I want you to say, welcome home. in the 21st century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.